Welcome back to Club News. Construction, development and planning for the future never stops in the club industry and that's exactly how it should be. And one company that this constant momentum has kept busy is Capital Bluestone. Here to talk about their projects in the industry is the Managing Director, Ben Fairfax. Welcome Ben. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So first off, look, how long have, has Capital Bluestone been working with clubs and can you tell us a little bit about some of the projects you're working on? Sure. Uh, Capital Bluestone has been established since the 1990 and um, all of our projects have been in a partnership sense, whether it be with community clubs, with private landowners or institutional landowners. And the club space is something that is relatively new to us. It was established as a result of the opportunity that we were presented with the Sharks back in 2010. Mm -hmm. So. Our, our way in which we engage with community, the way in which we understand our partners' needs, the way in which we problem solve, was we gave us a really good understanding of how we could work with the club. And that's evolved from there, from our, our success in securing the Sharks as their partner. We've then since secured another opportunity with COGRA RSL, and we're working with other community groups as we speak. It's a, it's a great challenge, a great opportunity, and from our point of view, it's something that uh, we treat with great honour and respect because it, we're we're effectively being given the chance to work with someone else's assets and deliver them a long-term outcome. Well, the, you mentioned, of course, the Cronulla Sharks development um, and their Woolabwee Bay precinct, which is, um, I think, being keenly watched within the industry. Can you tell us a bit about, uh, for those who aren't familiar, about that project? Yeah, the Sharks is a really exciting project. The, uh, the board of the Cronulla Southern Leagues Club identified in 2009 that with their asset, they needed to look at ways of improving the asset and realising future revenue opportunities out of it for, to make sure that the, the Leagues Club continued to be the social hub of the community. And it was, it was going through significant change. They had uh, quite difficult times financially, which you've probably read about, mm -hmm. and they needed to realise a way forward in the future. We, ca we, we presented an opportunity to create an entire new town centre and that was going to deliver a residential community, a new retail precinct to meet the demands of the area and a revitalised club. The club was always the first priority. We needed to understand what the club needed to be in the future and then we would wrap a solution around that. And that's, that's been a very exciting challenge for us, a very difficult challenge. As I said, we started back in 2010 when we were uh, appointed by them but it's now 2016 and we're, we're just about to deliver our first stage of residential. So it's a very slow process. It's a process where you need to engage and consult with the community and, and consult with the stakeholders and members of the club. It really sounds like a, um, a transformational project that will um, help secure their future. I'm sure a lot of other um, clubs, particularly NRL clubs, are probably looking at, um, at this project. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I think you're right, Carissa. I think at the end of the day, not only NRL clubs are watching us, but other clubs far and wide throughout New South Wales. We've heard back through Clubs New South Wales, and, and we're very appreciative of the, I suppose, the exposure that we've been getting for this project. It's, it's a benchmark project, in our mm. opinion. But at the same time, we're very mindful that we're being watched by the clubs to ensure that we're doing the right thing by the Sharks. And, and we take great pride in that. We focus very heavily on understanding their objectives and their needs. And it's not just a leagues club in this instance. You have a football club next door and a football ground, which is an entertainment venue, surrounded by a new, a new town centre and a precinct that we're creating. So that in itself uh, brings with it great responsibility, but also great challenges and great rewards. And we feel as though that in, in our partnership with the clubs and consistently working with the Sharks and their board and also their development team, Marcelo Veloz, the CEO, and Lyle Gorman, the CEO of the, the, the wider group, working closely with them to deliver a great outcome for the community is at the top of heart for us. So while we're being watched, we feel very confident that we can deliver an outcome that we can be very proud of and we can help the club re-establish themselves as a, a, a socially community-based hub for Sutherland Shire and give them financial independence, which is our first priority. Now, the, the Cronulla Sharks project and, and what the Willowbear Bay Precinct, that's a, that is a very big project and one that I know has um, taken a significant amount of work and consultation and engagement. Um, what about the, the project at uh, Cogra RSL? Is that on a, on a different scale? It's definitely a different scale. The, the project we're doing at Willowbear Bay is over 600 apartments and just under 18,000 square metres of commercial retail, shopping centre and a new club. Cogra RSL, on the other hand, is, is helping them to establish a brand new club, approximately 2,000 square metres in size, and around about 220 apartments. But the challenges are exactly the same. It's, mm. it's vitally important to engage with the board, engage with the members, engage with the community, 
and the stakeholders to understand the objectives that they're looking to achieve. Our first priority was to create financial independence for COGRA RSL and at the same time deliver them a long-term sustainable future in a community that's changing and evolving. So this is, a, you mentioned earlier that the, the club space is a, a relatively new one, although you know, you're starting off with two quite exciting projects here. Um, why did you want to partner with clubs as opposed to going to, I, I guess, what, for want of a better word, I might call a more traditional development model? Yeah, it's a good, a really good question, Carissa. It, ultimately, clubs have played a very vital role in the, the fabric of community. We pride ourselves on being able to deliver change and, and communities are evolving and changing rapidly. And some of the challenges the clubs are seeing is that how do they remain relevant in that community where the demographics have changed, the, the community uh, fabric has changed. So we see an opportunity to work with those clubs, drive genuine property outcomes that are solution orientated and deliver long term community benefit. We're not just here to be measured by the financial performance of the project, mm. we want to be measured by the community outcome and the way in which they engage and then the club becomes the socially relevant um, vehicle that it has been in the community in the past. So how do you work with everyone involved um, in these sort of projects to make sure that everyone's getting the most out of what they, out of the development they can now but also into the future and, and have that longevity? It's very much about consultation and collaboration. The, these projects are very, are very slow to get momentum. The Sharks, for instance, we started in 2010, will deliver our first stage in residential in 2016. The, the, the overall project will be finished by probably 2018, 2019. The same with, uh, with COGRA, we started on that and we were appointed in 2013 and we'll probably deliver that by about 2018 as well. So consultation is vitally important. We need to understand the needs of the club we're very transparent in the way in which we deal with clubs. We take time to understand the objectives and the vision of what the club wants to be. Sometimes the clubs are unable to articulate that vision and, and they're focusing so much on the financial capacity of the club and how they're performing that they don't get the chance to step away and look out into the community and what they can be. So we see it as a great opportunity. It's a, it's a very exciting time where communities are evolving. The clubs have been the social fabric of the community in the past and it's an area that as a partner working with them, uh, we get great job satisfaction and, and enjoy that opportunity to deliver real long-term benefit for the region. So really getting that um, balance, I guess, between the returns, but also that future role for the, for the club in their own community. Oh, it's, it's very much about that. At the end of the day, the financial objectives that you achieve are very much driven around the viability of the club in the future and delivering profits and returns. They have to be profitable projects, otherwise the banks won't fund them. But when the projects are finished, we don't want to just have walked on from the development and not be able to walk back and be proud of what we've delivered. We want to make sure we've established a framework where community are engaged with the club in a different way to the way they have been in the past. We get involved with a lot of the local community groups in the, in the areas. The Sutherland Shire Family Services is a group that we're working with, with Cronulla Sutherland Leagues Club. That's to establish long-term programs uh, where you're dealing with very important issues in community and if we're going to create a community of two and a half thousand people at the Sharks we need to understand the challenges of say domestic violence so we want to make sure that we're designing a community where we call it the cul-de-sac mentality people are working together and you have all ages of, of people living in demographics from first home buyers through to the, the last buyer that the age in place. That sounds like a, a very holistic approach to development and thank you very much for joining us today Ben. You're welcome thanks very much for having me. And that's all for today's edition of Club News. We'll be back on the 29th of March and as always every episode of Club News is available for viewing at the Club's New South Wales website. Goodbye. <laughs>